you know, I don't sit around um, randomly testing my oxygen for fun. I only will test it if I feel like something's wrong. I'm sitting here watching a movie. It's I don't know what time it is. Let's see, 12.30 a.m. Christmas, Christmas Eve. Well, I guess it's Christmas Day now. I started suddenly feeling stabbing pains in my head. Popped on the meter, popped on the oximeter, oxygen meter, and it started beeping. And there it goes again. Ever since I had a problem, ever, ever since I began to wean off this medication, I began to have problems with my oxygen. I think it did something to my spine. I, I have no idea. My heart and lungs and... I'm sitting on an angle and my spine does not feel good and it's a strain in my neck and spine and I kind of need I've got the uh, I've got I'm watching a movie on my iPad and I have the iPad my oxygen is low I have the iPad elevated on top of my sewing machine so it's it's eye level instead of watching a movie on the iPad like this and my neck hurts too much. So oxygen was, was just 90. It's 94 right now. It should be 95 to 100. Um, I've been struggling with my oxygen levels for, well, since this medication withdrawal started three, three years ago and three months. I am critically sleep deprived. I was critically sleep deprived for years prior to this taper. Prior to this taper for exact, oh uh, no, for almost a year I was sleeping only one or two hours a night prior to the taper. And then the taper started and immediately spine and heart and lungs and breathing and nerve damage and almost three and a half years later and I'm struggling still with my oxygen. I don't understand any of this. Unless it, you know, I don't know, you know, it could, could be, uh, now my, my ear just started bringing my, my, the hearing in my left ear just shut off and my ear is ringing so loud I can't barely hear myself talk. Gosh, how bizarre. Oof. So many unexplained things. Um, like, why would my oxygen be dropping 
the only thing I can think of is brain, brain and spine inflammation, and you know, I have carry malformation and low uh, cerebellum tonsils in the brain, and. I'm wondering if it's brain stem compression. I'm wondering if that's why I'm critically sleep deprived. And I'm wondering if serious inflammation, you know, causes more brain stem compression and make, you know, causes autonomic, autonomic issues. I took the meter off. Um, nobody's offered an explanation for any of this. I think I'm pretty sure even if they knew, they wouldn't tell me the, you know, tell me what their theory is or what they think is happening. Um, I've been waking up the past couple nights. I pop the meter on in the, when I wake up, and my heart rate is way too high. So I assume, uh, like, not not popping the meter on right when I wake up, but popping the meter on. I have no idea. Like. Sometime after, I literally have no clue, 20 minutes uh, or longer, and my heart rate is way, way, way too high, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm only sleeping one and a half, two, three hours a night. I'm thinking that I'm probably waking up with really low oxygen and you know I don't panic I can be afraid but not panic and I'm just kind of waiting in a daze to well when my head when my brain is suffering from low oxygen I'm not having constructive conscious like productive thoughts because it I, I'm out of it uh, like it, it affects my thinking I'm kind of it's kind of like banging your you know bonking your head on the wall or something you're kind of stunned and dazed and you're not having you know conscious I don't want to say rational you're just not even thinking yet you're just kind of in a state of shock or stunned Um, so I'm not waking up and having really, you know, intelligent thoughts or like wondering, gee, why am I, why is my heart rate so high, blah, blah. I can't even think when my oxygen is, when I'm recovering from low oxygen. I guess... It would have been helpful, more helpful if I put the oximeter on right when I wake up and then, which I often do, but I didn't these past, I was never looking at the heart rate. And the heart rate is so high that I, I can only assume that I've woken with low oxygen and my body's trying to recover. So I know... I'm pretty certain when I'm asleep, for the short time that I am, my oxygen and heart rate are too low. My breaths per minute are too low. And then when my body wakes up, you know, you try to overcompensate. I don't feel like I'm gasping for air, but I'm, I mean, I never gasp for air, even when, that's why part of the reason they didn't believe um, 
I knew I had severe apnea. And they said, Do you, are you waking up gasping for air? And I said, no, but I know I'm, I'm waking up not breathing. My body's not breathing. And they didn't believe me. They, they never believe anything I say. Um, <laughs> my heart rate's gone down to 27. I, I never wake up gasping. I wake up in shock. I wake up, I think, just waiting for things to try to, waiting for my body to do what it needs to do. And not, I'm really having problems breathing. Um, anyways. And that awful feeling since this began three years and I guess it's four and a half months ago um, every time I exhale I literally feel like the, the life is draining out of me it's such a I'm struggling to breathe I had some answers. I had two and a half hours sleep last night, less than three, less than three hours. But uh, it, the whole experience is just, just bizarre, you know?